Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul, and in this Red Game Tidicom video, we're going to be keeping things CPU related. That's right, this video is going to be focused all on CPU news, specifically of the lower end uh, section of the market. The i3, the Intel Pentiums, along with the AMD Ryzen 3 CPUs. So no thread rippers here. Uh, before we start with the news, however, just a quick update. I have bought a new lapel mic. I have bought a new mic arm for the current mic we have. And also there's a pop shield on its way. And there's probably going to be a few other bits and pieces I'm going to be purchasing. Hopefully that should improve the quality when I'm on camera of my audio. Because I'm well aware that that's one of the problems with it at the moment. So I'm trying my best to fix that. And there is a lot of reviews that we're currently finishing. The X299 board is almost finished. I have some final results that I'm actually getting not for the review. Uh, they're actually for a couple of interesting tech-related investigation videos. So I think you're going to find those very interesting. Uh, I have a memory review video coming up as well on a 32 gigabyte set. And also I'm in negotiation with a couple of other motherboard vendors for a Ryzen CPU and motherboard along with, I'm not quite sure what the other one is, so I can't really say, because quite frankly, I'm just entering negotiations and said, yeah, we should be getting something, but I'm not sure when and what. Other than that, we should have the event that we actually attended a few weeks ago. That's a bit late, I know, but uh, it's just been absolutely manic here. So we went to a drone event, so I'm going to be on camera a lot in that event. So that footage should be editing in the next couple of days, and that should be on the channel. And on top of that... There shall be a GTX 1060 review, which is going to be popping out as well, plus some other bits and bobs. Anyway, let's go to the news, shall we? And specifically, we're going to be starting out with Intel and the Pentium. More accurately, the G4560. Now, this CPU actually caused quite a stir when it was released, because you might say, well, the Pentium processors weren't exactly stellar especially in the Skylake era, but that's not the case with Cable Lake. In fact, the 4560 is actually a really impressive CPU. It has hyper-threading and two processor cores, 3 megabytes of level 3 cache, and runs at 3.5 gigahertz clock. But all of this is only for 64 US dollars. Now, it does have a couple of problems. It doesn't have the clock speed of some of the i3s, and it also doesn't have some of the instructions as well. So, for example, it doesn't have AVX. So, obviously, if you're doing something like video editing, transcoding, and 3D work, that type of jazz, then this CPU probably isn't for you. But it is a really cheap processor. Kind of. Because right now, some of the pricing for the CPU is going up exponentially. And accordingly, there are a few reports going around that the processor is actually being discontinued, or at least very limited in production. Now, originally, this popped up from Hardware.fl, which is a French uh, website, as far as I'm aware. The original report said that they were concerned, Intel, just to clarify, were concerned that this CPU was basically eating away at the sales of the i3, because for many people, a couple of hundred megahertz, uh, either way on the clock, uh, especially because the Pentiums overclock really well anyway, uh, along with the lack of AVX, is it really enough to detract from a really good gaming CPU for the budget-orientated individual? In fact, you're probably better off to plonk this money into a better graphics card. For example, if it was the choice between, I don't know, going with a GTX 1050 Ti and, let's say, a higher-end i3, or going with this processor and instead putting that money towards, like, a GTX 1060... Well, I think most people would agree that the 1060 is a much better purchase. And the article is claiming that it is an organised shortage on Intel's part. But Intel say that this is not the issue. Intel have said that the price hikes is part, possibly part of normal demand fluctuation. And there is no change in Intel's Pentium's production. We continue to offer Intel Pentium SKU uh, G4560. But it does appear that certain websites, for example, Newegg, do have the CPU at a more expensive price than normal. So there is another possible reason for this, and that is crypto mining. Um, 
obviously cryptocurrency has been quite influential at the moment with graphics cards, although those prices are starting to settle down a little bit. Uh, even GPUs, however, are becoming a little more prolific now on store shelves, so it looks like that's a good option. And obviously CPU performance isn't really that great of a performance enhancer for mining. Really, you just need the CPU whatever. I mean, you know, you could pretty much go with any CPU you can get your hands on. It's really the GPUs that make the difference. So there are a couple of other CPUs you could use an alternative. For example, you could get the, the G4600 um, or the G4620. They are a little more expensive or perhaps a little bit cheaper based upon what's going on here. So this is a, so, uh, so this is a CPU that I'd suggest if you can grab it at the very cheap price, do so. But... Intel are also introducing a few more i3 CPUs anyway. So this information I'm grabbing from Anantech, and basically there is a massive amount of i3 CPUs and Pentium CPUs currently on the market. Uh, the G4560 obviously represents the very low end, whereas the 7350K represents the higher end of the i3 lineup. Now, currently, the list price of the 7350, to give you an idea, is around 170 US dollars and has a, 70, uh, sorry, a 60 watt TDP. But there are a couple of new processors being introduced. For example, we are going to see the introduction of the i3-7120, the i3-7120T, the 7320T, and finally the 7340. As you can probably imagine, there are some inherent differences between these processors. For example, you might look at a part which has higher clock speed, a larger number of threads or cores, and overall there are some differences also in the GPU turbo frequency, and also whether they are unlocked, which of course is denoted with the K, or whether they're power optimized, which is denoted with a T. It's clear that Intel are definitely facing a lot of pressure from AMD's Ryzen. So this is actually a piece of news that popped up a couple of days ago, but quite frankly, I didn't really want to include it in the Threadripper video because it just seemed like such a disconnect to discuss Ryzen 3 and also uh, the Ryzen Threadripper in the same video, because generally speaking, you're appealing to totally dim different demographics. But Ryzen has now been confirmed. Ryzen 3 is going to be on store shelves worldwide on the 27th of July, so not too long into the distant future at all. Now, this is a quad-core processor, but there is no SMT at all. So, in other words, you only have four cores, four threads. However, it still has 512 kilobytes of level 2 cache per core, and only 8 megabytes of level 3 cache. But that's still not bad. That's still a pretty decent amount of performance. The TDP of this chip is supposedly around 65 watts. Now, there are a couple of different processors, and their pricing has supposedly been leaked. This leak originated on Reddit, and supposedly the information has come from a distributor in the user's country, and supposedly this is the same individual who has leaked a few bits before. So, grain of salt, all of that stuff, whether you want to take into consideration that, you know, this may be incorrect, that's totally up to you. But... There are a couple of different SKUs we're going to be discussing, the 1300X and finally the 1200. The 1300X is going to retail for 130 US dollars, whereas the 1200 is going to cost 109 US dollars, so not too expensive really. And one can make a compelling argument, let's take the 1200, which is once again about 100 US dollars, 110 US dollars. If we start to compare that to some of the processors in the Intel lineup, that actually really hurts Intel, because that's around the same price of a high-end Pentium slash entry-level i3. Do remember that those processors only have two physical cores, but they do, to their credit, have hyper-threading. Now, am I saying that these are better processors? Well, we don't know, because honestly we don't have the, the benchmarks, although we can probably make some speculation. Either way, these processors are going to be very good for AMD, because quite frankly they're eating into the processor, um, into the uh, into the Intel Pi. In fact, considering the Ryzen 5 at 1600 has actually surpassed price competitor 7600K in terms of market share, at least according to user benchmark, this does say that AMD are being somewhat competitive. They are definitely a fawn in Intel's side. And this is a good thing. I'm not saying that from the perspective of like, 
I don't like Intel. I'm not saying it's a perspective, excuse me, I can't speak today, of someone who likes AMD or anything like that. I'm saying it as a perspective of someone who just wants really good hardware for the monies. Now, what I mean by that is simple. I want you, as viewers, and as people, to get the best value processor for your money. Whether you're spending a thousand bucks or whether you're spending 150 US dollars, you deserve the best product for your money. Now, do bear in mind with the passmark thing, the, sorry, with the user benchmark thing, they are submitted results. So, because these are newer CPUs, it is possible that people are just like, well, okay, I'm going to be testing out my new Ryzen thing because it's pretty well established now. I mean, it's not like KB Lake was released, you know, the last couple of months or anything like that. So, it's pretty well established how the 6700K, the 7700K, in fact, to be really honest, because the 7600K is essentially the same thing as the 6600K, just with higher clocks, one can make a very compelling argument that even benchmarking it wasn't as exciting anyway. So, you know, there is that to take into consideration. But still, it's very cool. Oh, and one final bit of news, because quite frankly, I'm not going to cover this any other time. So I figure I might as well, because a couple of you have messaged me about this. And it's kind of cool, if nothing else. It's <laughs> kind of ludicrous. But Viking have shipped, or shipping, a UHC silo SSD. Now... You might say, well, what's so exciting about that, right? New SSDs are being shipped all the time. Who cares? Yeah, I'd agree with you. In fact, I'll be really honest. When I first saw the Viking ships SSDs, I actually glazed over it. I didn't even spot it. I, I wasn't even reading it for the first like couple of minutes. And then I kind of went to another website and it was the same thing on a couple of other websites. And I was like, okay, what actually is the whole story here? Then I read the title properly and it's actually because they're going up to 50 terabytes, not gigabytes. I just want to stress that terabytes of capacity. That's really cool. Obviously, these chips, I'm sorry, these drives are going to be quite expensive, but their specifications are pretty impressive. Um, their interface is a SAS 6 gigabits per second, um, and they have a sequential read of, three, of 500 megabytes with write of 350, which is pretty good. Um, that is pretty decent, to be fair. And you might say, how much are they going to cost? You know, three hundred dollars, four hundred dollars. No, no, no. It's zero point forty cents per gigabyte. That's actually how the manufacturer are pricing these drives because they are very customizable. So, for those who don't want to do the mathematics, and quite frankly, I don't blame you, you're looking at around ten thousand dollars for a twenty-five terabyte drive, whereas fifty terabytes is going to run you a very expensive and eye-watering 20,000 US dollars. Obviously, these are for, like, you know, servers and high-end stuff, so that's one of the reasons I wasn't super excited about putting into, like, a very specific video for you. But it is quite cool, nevertheless. And it does tell you that, you know, the prices for these drives are going to start to drop, as obviously the technology becomes more prolific and cheaper to produce. Let's face it, Hard drive sizes are going to have to get bigger anyway, especially for SSDs. Like, you can get a one terabyte SSD now pretty easily. Um, you know, not exorbitant pricing. But, with that said, you know something's awry when the size of games is getting to like 50 to 100 gigabytes for a game. Now, obviously, that's not exactly normal. With Forza, you're looking at 100 gigabytes if you're using 4K textures. That's pretty damn huge. That is absolutely monstrous. And even if you've got a pretty substantial internet connection, that's going to take you a while to download. But for a lot of people, that's a lot of hard drive space. And obviously, SSDs are going to become cheaper, which is absolutely fantastic. Anyway, it's been a bit of a bitsy video today, but hopefully you have found it somewhat informative, joyful, and entertaining. And, well, maybe some other stuff as well. I shall see you soon. Take care. Bye for now.